Good evening and welcome to the Taft City Council meeting and joint regular meeting of the successor agency also for Tuesday, September 17, 2013. As always, if you have a cell phone, please silence it. And we will begin tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Dave Knorr and an invocation by Cindy Brett Schneider. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll join me and just bear in mind the flag has still flown at half mast in remembrance of all those that perished in 911. That fight is not over. So if you'll join me in the salute of the flag, please. Salute and pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you please pray with me? Most holy Lord, let me first say thank you on behalf of all who are here tonight. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for life itself, for health, for community. Thank you for the honor of being able to work, do the work that you have called each of us to. Lord, we thank you especially today for our freedom. We thank you for loving us. Lord, I pray for our mayor, our city council, all the officials, and the city workers. Grant them wisdom when needed, sensibility, and confidence in decisions. Let there be peace in their lives and joy in their work. And Lord, I pray for this agenda tonight that is set before each one. Give each one assurance that what they do will benefit this community, this wonderful community of Taft. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Cindy. Sure. Uh, may we have a roll call, please? Mayor Linder. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cryer. Here. Councilmember Miller is absent this evening. Councilmember North? Here. And Councilmember Walter? Here. Thank you. First item on the agenda is citizens' requests for public comments. Do we have any tonight? I forgot to bring Oh. Here. Doug, could you check for us, please? <laughs> oh, we do have a photo. Uh, so I get to read the. Uh, Disclaimer, this is the time and the place for the general public to address the City Council on matters within its jurisdiction. <coughs> State law prohibits the Council from addressing any issue not previously included on the agenda. Council may receive comment and set the, ta uh, set the matter for a subsequent meeting. And we ask that you limit your comments to five minutes. And the first person wishing to speak is, oh, Susie Baker, uh, Secretary of Unity Thrift. Is Susie here? Oh, there she is. My name is Susan Baker. I'm the Secretary of Unity Thrift. I live at 909 Aurora Way in Taft. And I am on the agenda. So I didn't know if you wanted me to say my piece now or say my piece when my thing came up on I the I think agenda. you're there. If you would like to speak now, I would suggest you do so. Well, in the past, you've been really gracious and granted us uh, a waiver of fees for the park because, uh, as you know, that's not why we have paws in the park. It's to educate people to span neuter their animals. Um, which is in the news, all in the news now. So, uh, and David Couch is coming with vouchers. So, we're just requesting that you waive those fees again for us. It's going to be uh, Saturday, October 19th from 9 to 1. We would like to invite you all to come. We might make you judges in some of the contests. <laughs> I promise we won't dress you up in little doggy costumes <laughs> unless you want to be. <laughs> so, um, but it's going to be fun. We're, the Taft Lions is going to barbecue. We're going to use their insurance again. We're going to have the dunk tank in case some of you want to get in the dunk tank um, yeah, oh or shawl okay so we're just gonna have a, a lot of fun a lot of vendors and just hopefully we'll get people signed up and get more awareness of that people need to spay and neuter their pets so I thank you for your time and your consideration thank you Susie appreciate it <clears throat> next person is uh, Kathy Orrin with the Chamber Good 
Good evening. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, my name is Kathy Oren. I reside at 513 Hilltop Court. It's a pleasure to get to speak to you guys again. Um, I want to remind you that we are readying ourselves for the golf tournament October 26. That's at Buena Vista Golf Course. And the fishing derby is November 16th. We've had quite a few calls on the fishing derby already, and we're glad <coughs> to say November 16th is the date. And we will be registering folks at the uh, gas station at the corner of 119 and... Oh. Enos Lane. Thank you. It just <laughs> flew out of my head. Um, rather than Shannon and I going from tent to tent and disturbing people to give them their armbands or their wristbands, we found out it worked out much better for them to stop by and see us there. And then the Christmas parade is December 2nd. It's the first Monday. And um, we're very excited about that. We're going to be choosing the theme that will be announced next week. Our chamber board gets to do that, and we'll be announcing uh, the um, honorary, or the, <coughs> what am I want, trying to say? Grand Marshal. Thank you, Doug. We'll be choosing a Grand Marshal, and that will be uh, announced uh, after that. So we're excited to get ready for Christmas. It doesn't even seem possible. We haven't even had um, Halloween yet, but we have to get these things going. Um, I do want to make sure everyone knows that cruise nights continue. The sign came down, nutted everybody up. <laughs> the sign is going to go back up with new dates. By the way, that is not my sign, just so you know. Um, the sign will be coming back up with new dates. Just remember, first Friday of every month is cruise night, and we will be continuing cruise night. So. Very good. No problem. It'll cruise nights are round. getting big. Pardon It'll me? Be all year round, the it night. will be all year round. It will be all year round. Apparently, we don't have to worry about rain. Obviously. So, the last time we did that was over a year ago. And, um, and I remember it rained on the mayor's car, as I recall. And, and he was so irritated, we haven't had a drop of rain since. I guess that must be the reason. <laughs> Hotline to God there. So Now we know who to blame, don't yeah, we? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> More so, pressure. <laughs> um, we're very excited that the chamber is going to be uh, joining some members from the city staff at the ICSC uh, conference coming up in San Diego, and we're looking forward to our contribution there. We thank the uh, city for thinking of us to help out with that. So that's it for this time. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. It's always a pleasure. Okay, moving on to <coughs> council statements non-action. Mr. Waldrop. I'd just like to <clears throat> put a caution out there for there's been some thieving going on lately. Uh, house two doors from me got robbed, uh, the car. And uh, I hear out in Valley Acres a guy was gone for a couple of days, come back and all of his stuff was gone out of his garage. Uh, so I just want to make you aware to uh, be safe, uh, have somebody watching your place if you're gone. And uh, <coughs> the rails to trails that went in, uh, the new rails to trails down <coughs> on the west side, uh, we need to be careful there of crossing those roads because uh, kids won't look and uh, you, you, you gotta watch out for them until things get situated down there. But I just want you to be aware of, watch out. Thank you. Very good, Mr. Cryer. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to Unity Thrift. They do a really great job. Um, I've gone to uh, several of their events and it's always seemed to be well attended and it's well worth uh, going out there. And I encourage uh, everyone if they can to be out there and bring your dogs out there, or your cats, I hope. You know, the cats has paws. And uh, enjoy it, have a good time, and meet with your uh, different booths they have out there. I really encourage it. Um, another thing that's happened in California, kind of just kind of sick, you know. Our legislature is passing uh, regulations <coughs> with gun control. Now, their infinite wisdom, they think that raising um, minimum wage is going to help the people from $9 to $10. And then you listen to the papers, all the young folks saying, wow, that's cool. I'll get to buy a car or get, I can pay my rent or get a house. Uh, but they don't understand. 
that there's always consequences to it. One, I mean, I mean, when it, women wage has never been designed to be a, 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 a living wage. It's always for entry level wages <coughs> to start out. And if it's too high, nobody's going to hire the young people who have graduated from college or from high school or or dropouts. They're going to hire them because uh, you're too, uh, you can't afford you. You have no life experience. So they hire the older people that has a life experience. Or you'd be part-time. So you're, you're living through life through part-time because they can't afford you full-time. It's not really a benefit. It's, here they are. Our legislature is trying to so-called help the poor, to help the people on. on. They're not helping at all. They made it harder for it. And, you know, along with the, with the new uh, government, going with the health care deal, made it more tougher yet. Uh, people have, are going to all the time, the main businesses, especially the restaurant industry, the service industries, the motels, they're going to part-time exclusively. But whenever you raise minimum wage 25%, what happens? Everything else goes up 25%, so it's all relative. <coughs> but the, who's the biggest winner in this whole thing? It's not going to be us, it's not going to be the businesses, it's not going to be the people getting the $10. It's going to be China, Mexico. Asia, that all the manufacturing, everything else is to go over those those countries and be made of products there and reship back to California or go to other states, Nevada, Arizona, and, and business starts there and reship it into California. So we're going to have less jobs, less opportunities, and our tax money is going to go, we're going to have enough here to fund it, and what's going to happen next? They raise our taxes here because there's not enough income coming in. It's like uh, we passed that uh, sales tax and other taxes, what happened in that pass? The states give themselves a pay raise, give all the state employees pay raises. But them to us, why can they give us, well, if they go ahead and do something here in, in California, they give businesses a break. If they can give business a break, things are cheaper, instead of paying uh, $8 for a uh, Big Mac here, but maybe after the first of the year, it would be, be a lot cheaper. But, but whenever things go higher, it's always passed to the consumer. Nothing's free. Nothing's given away. There's always every action is a reaction to it, and everybody thinks that by getting uh, getting it, uh, the extra wages is going to make a big difference. But you get tax on it too. So actually, you're going to get that two dollar raise. You might get a dollar sixty after taxes, but the employer's got to pay uh, forty percent, thirty five percent on top of that two dollars. You know, the cost of the right to have you work uh, as an employee. Um, another question I would have would be like, uh, for instance, in the farming business, I'm going to go on a little longer, be done, <laughs> but it used to be, uh, it's, it's hard to find people to do more manual labor, like picking uh, radishes, uh, asparagus, uh, green onions, uh, broccoli, a lot of that stuff leaving California is all going to Mexico, almost all of it. It used to be Kern County is one of the largest areas for all those produce, turnips and stuff, because of the hand labor, it's all moved out down south. Because you can't, one, it's hard to find labor, and second, it, it costs too much to produce it. You, 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 can't, you can't grow a crop and it costs you more to harvest it than it would get on a return back to that crop. So it goes to another country, they can do it a lot cheaper and less rules and regulations. But if, if California would just go ahead and, and ease on the regulations and be more business friendly, the businesses would be more willing to hire people. Right now, everybody's afraid to hire. Who's, who's suffering? The poor or, the, or people who are entering jobs. They're the ones suffering the most because we are afraid to hire people well, and, and, uh, or to grow because of all these uncertainties in, in California. And that's basically what I want to talk about on there because I think it's, you, you listen to other people think it could be a great deal, but it's not. It may be for a short term, but the long term is going to hurt them. To, to hurt them. That's all I have to say, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Cryer. Mr. Norm? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Cryer is right about the fact that the state of California is the least business-friendly state in the 50 United States. That's not just my opinion, and that's not just his opinion. That's an opinion of Fortune 500 companies, and that's been seven years in a row. We have the highest individual income taxes. We have the highest sales taxes. We have some of the highest property taxes. We have the highest taxes on fuel in the state of California. Our infrastructure is rated 48th out of the 50 United States. We have a problem here. There is no free ride. 
the private sector creates income. It's a pretty simple process. In the last decade, we have run over a million private sector jobs out of the state of California. Over a million. 650,000 of them landed in Texas. Texas is doing very well right now, by the way. They're a business-friendly state. Uh, I believe the figure for the past year is of all the jobs created in the United States, over 93% of the jobs created were part-time. 93%. That's an ugly number. You know why? Part of it is Obamacare. Part of it is the way things are structured. It's hard to support a family on part-time. It truly is. Then people are forced to get two or three part-time jobs. It's not the American dream. That's the current American nightmare. It's something that we need to repair. Private business will repair that. The government cannot repair that. All they can do is get out of the way, create a positive environment for business, and then collect the money as business create jobs. Government cannot create jobs. They are not beneficial to you. So I agree with you. Thank you. Um, in regard to what Councilman Waldrop was saying about uh, the burglaries taking place, uh, I want you to know that our police force is working hard, working overtime. They do a very good job and they take their jobs very seriously. Nobody is more frustrated than they are when they know of a dirt bag and they hook up a dirt bag and then the dirt bag beats them home after they go through the process. Currently in LA County, if you commit a crime and you are caught and you are tried and you are convicted and sentenced to 240 days or less, they walk you out the front door. That's, that's the economic reality right now. 240 days or less. So police force does their job, judicial system does its job, the taxpayers does its job, dirt bag goes right out on the streets. That's a problem, AB 109. That's one of the problems with that. So the solution is, if you see something, talk to somebody. Talk to your neighbors if you're going to be gone. Don't look like you want to be a victim. If you're gonna walk on rails to trails, walk with a friend. Carry a flashlight. Let somebody know where you're going. Be cognizant, okay, because the dirt bags are out there and they will take advantage of you. Don't let it happen to you and try not to let it happen to your neighbor. <clears throat> Finally, there are a bunch of familiar faces out there, but in a very back row, back behind uh, the chief and back behind uh, one of the planning commissioners. That's right, go on back there. There's a bunch of young people. I gotta believe they're here for some government class. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a brief demonstration of government. I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna do this. You children, you young folks, you young adults back there are gonna ever so quickly elect a spokesperson. And then I'm gonna ask you to come right up here and you're gonna tell us why you're here. We love seeing you here. So quickly, elect a spokesperson. <clears throat> All right, you got five seconds. Four, three, two. Look at that. All right, see there? Was that an election or a volunteer? Uh, I think it was a little bit of both. <laughs> so if you come on up here, give us your name please, and tell us why you're here. Uh, my name is Madison Rubido, and I'm here for my ROP class. We have to write a paper on what goes on in board meetings, how things work, and what gets done. You do understand and appreciate the fact that you are the future of government, right? Every one of you. All the things that we talk about up here, the, the positive things in government and the negative things in government are going to impact your lives much longer than they're going to impact mine or people who are older than me. And there's, there's people in here that are older than me, I promise you. Okay, so the fact that you young people are here and you understand how government works and that us folks up here are no different than you are. We're just all a little bit older. Someday you might be up here as well. Just know that when we talk about the condition of the country and we talk about laws and we talk about appointees to uh, the courts, they will impact your quality of life much more than they will impact ours. So glad to see all you here. Take government very seriously. This is your <coughs> government. All right. Thank you very much Madison, for coming up. Madison, I have a quick question. Who's your teacher? Uh, Ms. Cloud. Cloud, uh, yeah. Deborah Cloud? Yeah. 
Okay, all right. Tell her I said hello and that uh, you um, got to spend a little time with the best mayor Taps ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and the best ex mayor Taps ever had. <laughs> what? <laughs> thank you very much. Well, That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. I can say nothing. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. And, and, and uh, Mr. Nord is exactly right. Uh, what we're doing today is going to affect your future, and we hope that we're doing it right. But if we aren't doing it right, it's going to be up to you folks to come in and, and kind of do the cleanup legislation for us. So if we're not on track, don't hesitate to get in touch with us too, okay? All right. The only thing I wanted to segue on was the, um, the, the issue with crime. Um, I find it really interesting that, uh, as Mr. Norso eloquently states, the scumbags out there. Yeah. Um, they, ha they have smartphones, folks. Um, they have better phones and sometimes better technology than most of us, and they know how to use it. And I really have to question why anybody will, um, will be leaving town and put on Facebook, on my way to the beach for three days. Well, remember, that's a public domain, and anybody who's even re remotely related to any of the friends on your Facebook is going to see that there's an empty house for three days. It's a perfect invitation for somebody to come up and enter your home and take those things that belong to you. I strongly encourage you, even if you're going down to have dinner at Hacienda Grill, that you don't have to tell the world you're doing it because they look for things like that as an opening uh, to, to your home. Uh, you will never see anything about me leaving my house or leaving town because um, I don't want to take the chance and give the opportunity for somebody to know I'm gone. I'd much rather them drive by and wonder if I'm gone <laughs> because they also know that um, I do enjoy shooting once in a while. So anyway, <laughs> but I, I would really strongly caution you that if your phone is set up to automatically broadcast where you're at, or, um, or you have the habit of letting people know that you're at the beach for the day, I would strongly encourage you to rethink that. Tell everybody when you get home, had a wonderful time at the beach, but don't tell them you're going. So just a little common sense there, I think. And I think the chief would agree with me. So thank you very much. All right, we'll move on to a planning commissioner's report. Do we have a planning commissioner with us tonight that's going to do a report? Oh, Renee Hill has been elected. Did you volunteer or did you, were you elected? <laughs> Good evening, Mayor Linder, members of the council, the planning members, excuse me, the members of the planning commission discussed and approved the following conditional use permits. The first for a 65 foot tall monopine wireless communication facility for AT&T just southwest of OT Cookhouse. We get our phones not to drop anymore. <laughs> the second to reuse an existing building to reestablish a used car dealership on the former SJ Mobley lot located at 200 Center Street for Emanuel Campos. The commissioners then discussed and approved a site plan review to set a 1,440 square foot office trailer for use as a training office for an existing on-site industrial use located at 1377 Kern for D&D &D Equipment Investments, LLC. Mark Staples, the interim director, presented the commission with documents pertaining to downtown zoning and development standards. We reviewed the 1994 and 1999 overlays, which I didn't even wow. know existed, wow. among with the 2010 zoning. In an open forum with members of the community, we discussed the legalities of stronger enforcement and penalties of negligent building owners. This will be a continuing discussion in future, future meetings, and we will keep you advised of our progress. In addition, Chairman Oren requested study sessions for the Planning Commission to further our education on protocol. Our meeting was adjourned at 737. It was a long one. All right, very good. Thank you, Renee. Thank you for your service. Uh, moving on now to department reports. Any department reports tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to city manager statements. Mr. Jones. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a reminder, um, I will be out of town the rest of the week. Don't tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I have someone with a gun at my house. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 they would never find your house. <laughs> <laughs> and dogs and guns. Yeah. Anyway, I'll be out of town the rest of the week attending the ICSC, uh, representing the city um, down there. And then just a reminder, tomorrow at the Taft Veterans Hall at 6.30 p.m., 
Uh, they're having the scoping meeting for the oil and gas uh, permitting. Um, that's for the Kern County uh, Planning Department for their uh, proposed zone amendment pertaining to oil and gas uh, permitting here locally. That's a big deal. So hopefully people can show up and show their support for that and kind of outnumber the environmentalists that we yep. show. Sounds good. <laughs> that's all I have for good. you. Good. Thank you, sir. Uh, city Attorney Statements. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have nothing this evening. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, next item is future agenda requests. Gentlemen, is this the, the time and the place that if you have a agenda, future agenda request, we can uh, move it forward? I don't. None this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cryer? you have any? Not really, no. Okay. All right. Very good. And I have none. So we'll move on to, do you want to, would this be the logical time, you think? Uh, well, Mr. Cryer and I have had a conversation, and we actually were going, maybe it's more of a request of um, the city staff and the city attorney. Um, we are all busy in our current occupations and lives, and um, we were wondering if, if there's a possibility that due to, most of our committees have a, a set number of council members, which is, can be no more than two, and an alternate. Is it possible for us to elect additional alternates so that if at the last minute we needed to bring in an, an, another individual as long as there's only two council members could we have alternate a b and c or something additional alternate i don't mean to put you on the spot and, and that was a mm -hmm. conversation we had and and we could we could just give that to staff to re to review if you'd like right so we would probably bring this back on a future agenda to discuss committees yeah i think so there's with there, your direction yeah we and we can certainly work through that okay there's the concern will be uh if you have well, the concern will be a daisy chain meeting where if you have alternates going in successive weeks then you gather a collective concurrence with true two members and then one person stays and then the third member and then all of a sudden you've got a quorum that has has had a collective yeah. concurrence on that right. so but That's if you've got three if you've got you know if you already have three members, you're with there one already. alternate, then you're already there, and yeah. four is, you know, a similar analysis. But we can certainly put this on the on a future agenda and discuss it. Well, I would I would suggest we move it to staff to to review, and then if it's if it's something we can do, bring it back on a, as an agenda request, and we'll we'll do it and take a look at it then. And I would uh, well, I don't know if I need concurrence on that. I guess I brought it up. So I'll, okay, uh, all right, very good. Thank you. Um, We'll move on to the consent calendar, which is items 8 through 20. All items listed on the consent calendar shall be considered routine and will be enacted by one roll call vote. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the city council requests specific items to be removed from the consent calendar for separate action. <coughs> Any item removed from the consent calendar will be considered after the regular business items. Um, Items tonight are items number eight, which is minutes of the regular September 3rd meeting. Number nine, payment of bills. Ten, the second reading of a zoning ordinance amendment related to recreational vehicle parks. Eleven, ratify expenditure for office equipment for building department. Item number 12, the third annual pause in the parks event sponsored by Unithrift Outreach and Rescue. This is a recommendation to waive the fees for the use of Veterans Park. Item number 13, City Investment Policy Annual Review. 14, Unemployment Compensation Payouts. This is due to the CCF closure. Uh, item 15 is Grant Administrator Position. 16, Title Change of Enterprise Zone Manager to Community and Business Development co co Coordinator. 17, Associate Planner Position. 18, Authorizing the Filing of an Application for Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality or CMAC Program Funding and committing the necessary local match and stating that the assurance to complete the project. 19 is motion to accept the construction easement from the Taft Union High School District for the Safe Routes to School project. And that's SRTSLNI-5193, parentheses 034. You gotta get that number in there. And item number 20 is Taft Successor Agency approval of final budget for fiscal year 2012-2013 and proposed budget for uh, 2013 and 14. Gentlemen, does anybody wish anything to be pulled from the consent calendar? That's a lot. That's a bunch. We all good? I have none. Then I would entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. There's no further discussion. May we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Fryer? Yes. Councilmember Noor? Yes. 
Councilor Waddup? Yes. And Mayor Linder? Yes, thank you. Um, at this time, we've concluded our regular business items and we will be adjourning to closed session. Um, we will be discussing several items, which is item A, conference with property negotiator Craig Jones, city manager, government code section 54956.8 on two properties, undisclosed locations. Item B is conference with labor negotiator Craig Jones, city manager, government code section 54957.6, all units. And C, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, government code section 54956.9, paragraph A, city of Taft versus the CDCR. Thank you for being with us tonight, and we're adjourned to closed session.